Just do it. Yeah. The best part of the podcast in my experience is the yeah. part that nobody gets to hear. <laughs> like Which it's the pre-gaming. <laughs> it's like when we're, so I just started pressing play. Cause I'm like, I want my listeners yeah. to get to hang out with us. And really yeah. the best part is the most informal part where we're talking about blue light glasses and acupuncture, you know? Totally. And I was <laughs> just saying, I need to ground myself. And Molly was like, you were like, no, don't. No, because don't ground you yourself. Flying high, right? Fly high. <laughs> be your, be your you is you. Yes, I know. That's the whole point of this. I love it. We were talking, what do they call peepers? The eye peepers. glasses? I want to work for them. Yeah, yeah, peepers. So when the pandemic hit, I was exhausted all the time. Yeah. And half the reason was because I was scaring, staring at a screen uh, yeah. all day. And so I started to wear, but now you, people who don't know me think that I would wear glasses, but these are just blue light glasses. I end up wearing them all the time. I wear them out. Now I'm like a person who wears glasses all of a sudden, now, but they're not real. <laughs> now all of a sudden you, that's so funny. They look, they look yeah. like, like I'm a, like a sexy think. librarian vibe. And I'm always here for that. <laughs> Right. Just a hundred percent of the time. Oh this gosh. isn't even what we're talking about, but this is the truth of us. Like this is what yeah. they need to know. People yeah. need to know this about us. And then we can get yeah. into some of our professional, professional credentialing. Yeah. I think we're talking things. acupuncture, people blue light blocker glasses and mm -hmm. flying high on natural, natural yeah. endorphins. And yeah. I think also your makeup looks incredible today, <laughs> but I am, I, I love your insides. I say that your outsides look great today. I love your insides. You too. Just, thank you, Molly. Okay. Received. I'm working on receiving. So my hand is on my heart. You are working. I'm, I know I'm that receiving. about you. I know that about you. Yeah. I'm receiving. It's so funny because I'm laughing and I'm like looking, I'm like, oh, the glistening on my face. That's great. The, it's very awesome. dewy. Yes. Yeah. It's very dewy. Yes. Humid. That works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Humid dewiness. Love it. I love it. Well, I have to say that I am so excited because the last time we chatted was like, literally it was just, can we just tell them this? Like, so Julie and I were set up by our friend, Allie and our friend, Allie is not one to set people up. Like we have another friend who sets people up, but right. not Allie. And so I don't love being set up with people. I have a pretty full power circle, but when Allie's like, you should meet this girl, I was like, all right, you probably should meet, but we, okay, listen, you have to clock it. Cause it's so nice to meet soulmates, isn't it? Uh, and you clock our conversation, like five and a half minutes in we're like, I'm talking about like how I made amends to my dead dad. You know, you clock it at like six and a half minutes and we're like deep in like our recoveries. Like these are the kinds of like this truth and honesty is like so deeply my love language, but not a lot of people really go there with me. And so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to know about me and Julie, we fell madly in love on our first date. <laughs> Like right away, we, we so used nice. none of our codependency skills and here we are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, I love it. You're here so are. funny, Molly. Yeah. We got, I remember you had the whole, you had some stories, I think by like oh, yeah. 10 minutes, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to yeah. But when you meet like-minded people, it's so easy to connect in those ways. Yeah, absolutely. Which is why just wanting to have you here and have a real like deep, deep level full blown, yeah. just heart open. Which yeah. We're just going to put our hearts on our keyboards. Yeah. They're on there. Yeah. Yeah. They are. yeah I'm like I actually see like a heart behind you. I don't you're know listening. You're... <laughs> yeah. For your listening pleasure here is yeah. me and Julie and our hearts. <laughs> so with that, I think I'll just take a pause and introduce you. I mean, even sure. though I, and I love, 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 this is so fun. I think I'm going to just start making this. Isn't it the thing. best way to, I'm so done with yeah. doing anything the way you should do it. Yeah, <laughs> but really... Maybe I'm old. I used yeah. to like read the bio and I'm like, enough. I'm just having a conversation. Sometimes I forget to even say the bio. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm like, shoot, I was going to read your bio just to make sure I don't forget anything because you're kind of a badass. But I mean, I could say it in a, I could say just in a, in a sentence, Molly is just a badass who wrote a book that I think everyone should read if you've ever struggled with sugar or food. Yeah. Thank um, you. Yeah, it's called. Black I received Food that. Sugar. That took a long time. I received that. I received my awesomeness today. Yeah, good. All right. Well, we're starting on a really, really yeah. solid foot here. <laughs> we're really winning. Should we? Call, I'm going to call my therapist after this. <laughs> You're like Keely. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord, this is so fun. I'm going to call this the Molly effect from now on. All my phenomenal family. I call my used to my soul family because I really feel my peeps all over. I feel you, and I. I, you know, usually have like a fun little, little intro. I'm going to call it the Molly effect. We're going to just start rolling right away. It's so much more fun. And you know, these people are listening are not idiots. Go Google me. 
Yeah. I'm a therapist. I'm a shaman. I'm Julie's friend. And, you know, go, go do some extra credit. I went to Cornell. Like, you know, it's not all that interesting. I wrote a book. I have a podcast. Oh my gosh. Yes. You wrote a book called Breaking Up With Sugar. I wrote a book called Breaking Up With Sugar. Yeah. And um, yeah, I wrote that book on an aside. This is something that's happening in my community right now. And my head's popping up over it. Okay. Like diet culture sure. is, diet culture is like deeply evil. Yeah. And while these people in my Facebook group or whatever, my larger community, Instagram, whatever, and they've, there's this trend of, of trying to get more rigid, like, mm. and they're all doing this new thing called a restart. And I just get in this, I'm like, we don't use that languaging in my world. We can yeah. say refresh, we can say recommit. And so they're all like seeking this like control of like day counting and like uh, stuff I'm like fundamentally opposed to, yeah. you know, and I wrote breaking up with sugar because, and if, if any two people, because I, what people think it is to break up with sugar is like this punishing, you know, life is over life, the size of a postage stamp, like, yeah. you know, there's no life in your life, right? It's this hyper-focused, obsessive life of weighing and measuring and not being allowed to do things. And cause that's the only kinds of sugar books I knew. I knew sugar books that were rigid and diety. I knew sugar books that had sugar in them, right? Like don't eat sugar, but here eat molasses. And then I knew sugar books that were really like medical. And I think also very confusing this supplement, that supplement, this and that. And I'm like, for me, like in my story, like I just couldn't stop eating and I was like about to lose everything. So like I needed something kind of simple, but yeah. to me, a food is a relationship game, right? If you want to do it long-term and you want to do it well, but the other thing is, I say this to people when I treat them, you know, like it, it is not a question of if you're going to screw this thing up, you are going to screw this thing up. And nobody's talking about the part of food relationship and especially food relationship when you have a sugar susceptibility or anything like that of like what to do when you don't want to do what you're supposed to do. Right. So you find in these more rigid communities of food addiction, two kinds of people, my opinion, yeah. this is controversial, but go Molly, go, I am. go girl, you go. But you either have these people that are living very small lives. So you're basically trading out one addiction for the next, right? These very small compulsive lives. Or you have people who are, re, um, are reliving some kind of trauma or really living in that saboteur part of them who are continuously breaking their abstinence because their abstinence is the size of a postage stamp. Yeah. And they're just like day one, day one, and they're reliving. That is a trauma. That is a trauma response, if ever there was. And that's. I was just doing a podcast on my podcast, "What You're Craving," with this woman in my community who's been in for two years, and she just walked from Portugal to Spain. Mm. You know, and she was like, "I don't know what to do about my food plan." I was like, "F your food plan." Yeah. <laughs> like, Get some, get some bright lines and go enjoy your life. And she did. It's a great podcast. I mean, it's so great. I went to, ba I've been at Sugar and Flower 13 years. I went to Bali for a month. Like yeah. you make it work. Yeah. Yeah. You don't live a small life. Like that's what addiction does. It gives you a small life. Like you live a big, beautiful life with some, you know, with some flexibility. Yeah. I, what I'm loving, what you're saying is, and, and cause I have been there in all of that mindset yes. of you know, it's gotta be to be like rigid and it's gotta be in this little like tiny box of what I'm doing. And what I love about you and what you're saying is, no, it's about, look, we get one life, like go live it, go trap, do the thing, travel, be out there. And, go to parties. Yeah. Like sushi. Right. Yeah. Did you say eat sushi? I did. Cause oh, eat I told you this. I once had someone in a fellowship that like, was like, you can't, go to Nobu because there's sugar in that rice. I was like, we have differing truths, <laughs> but thank yeah. you so much for your offering of help. <laughs> yeah. But I think sharing. that's the piece. Cause honestly, just to be a little nerdy for a second, I'm sure, you know, this given you're the preeminent coach in my life, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's literally only one piece of data that exists in all of weight loss and almost even all of addiction where it says like how people are successful. Cause like 
there's a lot of people that get successful, you know, there's people who are successful with intuitive eating. There's people who are successful with food addiction, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. One piece of data. And it says that the key to everything is self-determination, right? Which is sort of making this decision on your own yeah. of what works for you, that ownership, that why. And then there's tons of research that sort of supports that. And I think that's the thing. Like that was a very powerful moment in my recovery when this woman who had far more time than me, I don't know that she had a life I wanted, by the way. So that was kind of helpful. I saw her, she sort of had a postage stamp life. Right. When she was like, yeah, you know, like these protein bars and this Nobu, I mean, we're not, you know, I'm not going to like the seven 11 and getting sushi. Right. And she's like, yeah, you know, I just, I would, I don't think you should eat that. I was like, well, thank you so much for sharing yeah. your opinion. <laughs> I got to go yeah. eat Nobu and my protein bar. Bye. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for your opinion. Yeah. One of my teachers always says that he's like, well, that's an opinion. Cause we are like diet culture's gotten us like selling our souls to like anybody yeah. that maybe has some success. Cause we're so desperate. And in this like trauma state. Mm, yeah. 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 I, I want to unpack this, the trauma state with you. I also want to share as much as you want. I'd love people to get a sense of you, your story, like oh, around yeah. food and oh, sugar yeah. and sure. then how you got into the book. Cause it, I mean, I'm like, Oh, I know it, but I'm realizing not everyone's going to know you or know that I'm like, Molly, take us back. Yeah. As far as you like. It's what happened. Well, it's, what happened? <laughs> well, I was born nine pounds, 12 ounces upside down with an umbilical cord around my neck. Oh, so f- 15 days late. <laughs> so there's rough. that. <laughs> <laughs> but which is sort of true in lots of ways. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh this is it like I really come to this thing quite naturally. Like it, any checkbox that you have on susceptibility on, on loaded gun. I come to, right. So I have a largely obese family. Um, I have a largely addicted family and I have a largely afflicted by addiction family. So I, any, any of those prerequisites I have. And then, um, when I was three years old, my dad, who was a a big time cocaine addict, um, he died and he died very traumatically. He drove off a cliff. And so then that, uh, that shot the gun, right? So they say, you know, genetics loads the gun and then life sort of pulls the trigger. And for me, that was really pulling the trigger point. We could talk all day about what that means. And to me, the real spirituality of it, um, is that I really lost my faith, right? Cause Mm -hmm. that, you know, sort of when I asked where my dad was and my mom was like, whatever you say to a four-year-old, you know, I was like, how could he have done this to me? And frankly, that sort of defined my relationship with God pardon Mm. my language for those of you who are offended, but with universe, with spirit and really started my relationship with self-sufficiency because today the most dangerous words that come out of my mouth are like, I got it. I'm fine. It's no big deal. Like never got it. Never fine. Always big deal. Right. (laughs) And so I really turned to food very easily, very quickly. My mom would say at four, you know, I was at that playland at five. I was like, where are the churros? Where's my mom? Who's watching me? How much can I get? Like at Jen Corwin's house when I'm nine years old, like where's the coffee cake? Where it's the M&Ms? Like, how can I get it? Who's watching me? Just like hustle, like just the hustle for the food. You know what I mean? Oh my gosh, and I frankly, I have to say the hustle for um, the acceptance Like I was like this big curly haired, you know, chunky kid in like the outskirts of New York city where everyone had two parents, everyone had siblings, everyone had Zeke Haparichis. I couldn't fit into them, you know? So there was this parallel of like hustling for food or like hustling just not to get bullied, whatever. So I really, that big brain you were talking about kind of helped me. I was always like in charge of things, you know, it was like my relationship with codependency, whatever. And then you just fast forward and and that just was like a snowball. It was a snowball. It was a snowball, but you added in like age of 16, crashed a car. My coping skill was like to want to kill myself. You know, I had very, very few coping skills. Right. So I was like hospitalized at 16. Like it just was always like a little bit messy, but also like my big brain kind of always kept it together. You know, it's fine. It's fine. It's no big deal. It's fine. You know, I went to college and I was somewhere in some part of this like Bermuda triangle of like deep in my eating disorder, deep in my depression, or maybe deep in like some deep alcohol drinking. Right. And then like, I don't know, like they always say about addiction, like I loved and I lost. And so like all of that served me for like a really long time, but I would go on these like bouts of depression. Like I didn't graduate. I didn't go to my graduation, like just like runaway bride of it all. So as I got older, so in the year, in these years, um, the food really started to take over. I mean, it really started to be the food and depression started to be really the predominant. 
And I just started to like eat my way through life. And um, I just want to say to everyone who's listening, like not laying on my back, like would try anything, but like, like, you know, I, there isn't, I was like at Weight Watchers when I was seven. I was a nutritionist when I was seven. You know what I mean? Like I was doing diet pills, but then like binging on diet pills at the age of 12. Like I was trying to make myself throw up. Like I was at every nutritionist under the sun. I was every act. It didn't matter. And at that, I mean, honestly, when I look back, if not that you could have taken sugar from me back then, but like that was the, I certainly am eating disordered, but when you take sugar and flour out of it biochemically and from my endocrine perspective, it, it makes a, it makes it a battle. I can fight, you know, it just, without that, it's just impossible. So, um, so here's the best part of the story, which is I'm 24 years old. I'm failing out of my first year of grad school at university of Michigan, because I'm deep in addiction and deep in depression. Mm. And my grandmother, who's the only person who isn't scared of me, calls my mother. Carney Wilson just has bariatric surgery. She says, I'm paying for this. Molly's doing it. I'm the only one not scared of her. I, I don't care. Screw insurance, screw everything. Go into the knife, sitting there being like, I don't really care if I die. I had such a loose grip and relationship. I couldn't have, I mean, I love life. I am like viva la vida loca at this part of my life. But like in those days, hit, bus hits me, bus hits me. And one would think at 325 pounds, when my underwear stopped fitting and I was wearing flip-flops in the snow because I, you know, couldn't tie my shoes and, you know, and just couldn't do life. And I remember being in New York city with my friends coming back and their faces aghast and couldn't walk a quarter of a mile without my lower back wanting to fall out. You know, you just think the end of the story was I had bariatric surgery. And so we're here, but it's not the story. I ate my way through bariatric surgery, you know, cause it's a. Yeah. medical, it's a medical intervention. And right. to me, this is incredibly spiritual and incredibly emotional, right? And physical is only one part of it. Yeah. So I find myself being in the seating disorders therapist. I know when I'm 13 years old, I'm at a Weight Watchers camp and I literally get a download, like this thing is yours to fix. Cause I'm at Weight Watchers camp being like, I'm going to gain all this weight back. They're running me and they're feeding me. Like, it's so fun. Josh Cohen's my boyfriend. It's amazing. But I'm in Miss Peck's you know, ninth grade human uh, cooking class and my, and the button falls off my jeans. It pops off. Mm. Right. Cause I'm back in that cycle of shame and some say, and what's wrong with me and what's wrong with me and what's wrong with me, which like, Oh, had to work out so much of that. Nothing's wrong with me. Everything's wrong with diet culture, you know? And it, so I'm 13. And so I'm like, I get this knowing, you know, when everybody's like, wants to like get married or be a doctor or be a lawyer. I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to like help people to solve, to like, you know, heal their relationship with food since I'm 13. And, um, and I sort of do that all the while. And these sad stories, I'm like getting my bachelor's in social work. I'm like working at the weight loss camps, like doing small groups there, like with my BSW, like whatever. It's a funny thing. And, and struggling like a, like a mofo only to learn. And you and I both know this, not a struggle I've had in my life that hasn't been helpful to another person. I mean, I can look at somebody so quickly and say, okay, like, here's, here's the thing, <laughs> right? Like, here's where you are. I've been there. It's not even like, I'll say to people, like, I didn't learn this at Columbia university. I'm about to tell you, I need to learn this, my own therapy or my own pain. And that's, that's worth it to me. All that pain is worth it to me. And, and, and it's funny. Like when I was ready, breaking up with sugar, I, I was so ashamed of this, the story of bariatric surgery that I left it out and I did, and I, mm. and I closed the book for, for four years because I was lying to everybody about it by omission. I just didn't want it. It was so shameful. And the amount of people in my life, two years later, after this book came out that have written me letters and said to me, oh my God, I've, thank you. Me too. Me too. Me too. I've never heard somebody say that before. I mean, that's the point of life. So anyway, long story long, I'm just dying. I'm just dying. And I'm, a, oh, and I'm an eating disorders therapist. I'm dying. I'm binging my brains out. Mm. Hate everybody screaming at my best friend. Like, how dare you get married? Like how you do this to me? You know, just like the gnarly, you know, I don't know it, but like everything's being, everything's holding on by a thread. I'm going to 12 step meetings. I'm like thinking like people are going to know me there. I'm just so full of like myself sitting in the back, with like a hat on, you know, and um, a couple of things happen. Number one, the drug reps, I'm working in eating disorder clinics, the drug reps bring like these blueberry muffins for us all to engage in. I engage in like five of them so quickly that I go to the bathroom at my eating disorder clinic and I throw them up. 
my doc, my boss, who's like one of the leading eating disorders doctors in the country in the world, walks in on me. Growing oh gosh. up. Yeah. And I love her because she's so avoidant. She writes me a text. Hey, can you work with someone in the clinic to deal with this? I was like, oh, just went down the wrong pipes. But it was just like that moral bottom. You know, I was looking yeah. at myself in the mirror, not knowing myself. Also, I was about to lose my livelihood. And my brother, Mikey, goes on paleo and he just starts dumping weight off. And I was like, well, that's for me, paleo. So I go on my version of paleo, which is like no sugar, no flour. And I have this friend in OA who doesn't eat sugar and flour, but I think she's a maniac. You know, I'm like, how could you do that? What's that like? like right away. Not for me. I'm fine. I can moderate. So I go on paleo and two things happen. First things I go through detox and I'm like trained in addiction. So I'm like, mm, something's up here. Cause, uh, this ain't a normal diet. You know, I'm hungry, but I'm also like sweating and exhausted and angry and all the things we know come from detox. And then a few weeks later, I'm actually like better. And better than I had been ever in the history of my life. Yeah. And it was easy. Like I wasn't hungry. I wasn't, I was like, what is this? And of course I knew what it was. I'm trained in diabetes. I mean, it's just amazing. The blind spots of addiction. And, you know, I was doing, I was trained. I started the, the first ever therapeutic boarding school for adolescent obesity when I was 24. And um, I was trained in like low fat eating and calorie counting and all this crap. And I was doing that in my clinic. And after this had worked for me for a little bit of time, I literally walked to my clinic and I was like, okay, we're starting something new. And what was so interesting, there was a bunch of people stale like me holding on for dear life to their like snack wells and jelly sandwiches that all got better too. It was like, did you ever see the movie Awakenings? It's such a good movie no, with I Robert De Niro. Well, anyway, the point being is that they all take these meds and they're like, oh my God, we're awake. Right. So that's that. And I never looked back and I got, I got mentors and I got trained and I just have been doing that ever since. And, um, you know, and I guess every single person was like, what books should I read? And there was no book I wanted anyone to read. So I wrote it. You know. uh, I love it. I love that. That's the answer. You're like, actually it isn't here. So it's come through me. Yeah. I'm going to birth that baby. Girl, there's a lot here. There's a lot. A lot, a lot to uh, unpack and look yeah. at. I'm like, I'm Lord. proudly extra. I'm proudly extra. <laughs> yeah, like, I, 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 I am like, super, I love extra. So yeah, bring it I'm proudly extra. M my brain is like, there's a lot, which where, where are we going to go first? Because yeah. I think, you know, well, something, I think that's really interesting for those who might be, it's still to my, in my mind, people that have not had sugar addiction or I, I'm married to this normal person. And it's oh, just aren't bizarre, they amazing? bizarre. Yeah. He'll have one square of chocolate at night, one little square, maybe two. I'm like, I don't even, we're not speaking the same language. I don't and even. Godson even, will be like, yeah. eat a bite of like a, Le, a Le, Levain cookie. He's like, I'm done. I'm like, hmm, tell me more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what in earth made you not continue? Like, I don't even understand. You're that. eating a cookie at 11 AM. Like, aren't you just going to go out and get some more and then pass out and then feel really bad about yourself? No, right. no. Okay. <laughs> like, right. And so there's some who might be listening that, that haven't had this. I have a feeling just from <laughs> this community that there are going to be many who are on a spectrum or that relate to this, but this is, this is an addiction. It's it, it, the detox is real. It is yeah. real. And I don't even know, you know, I'm trained in this thing called dialectical behavioral therapy, which is the treatment of suicide and borderline personality disorder. And so yeah, one of the things in DBT is like, we just don't get too caught up in language. If it feels yeah. judgmental, don't use it. And so like, I don't know. Yeah. Call it an unhealthy relationship. Like, great. Yeah. Let's look at it. Cause that's how I feel like I don't yeah. know. Like I, that really works for me, but I'm also alcoholic. So I like really that, that paradigm really works for me. Yeah. But if it doesn't work for you, kick it to the curb and find whatever does. Like I've been on so many podcasts where they've said to me, you know, like, well, what's the difference between an eating disorder and disordered eating? I'm like, I'm not answering that because if you don't feel like you're in a healthy relationship with food, yeah. then we need to solve for that. Yeah. And just because you might not fit under an umbrella, doesn't mean you don't deserve to heal. So if you're like, huh, yeah. part of that story is really resonating with me, but not the whole thing. I didn't eat my way through bariatric surgery. Like you, like you deserve to heal. Like you did, like, yeah, I have like this amazing relationship with food in my life. Now it's more than it's like, I couldn't ever mm -hmm. imagine. I was at a meeting. This woman's like, I guess it's this old Italian proverb. And it says, not all ills come to harm you. Mm. you know, Ooh, I love that. 
Yeah. Uh, it's going on my social. Like you could put it on yours too, but yeah, just we're to say we'll twinning it. social, but like, yeah, <laughs> to me, like my, none of my ills and I have many have yeah. come to harm me. They have all come to heal me and they've all come to help me heal others, mm-hmm. you know, help me to help others to heal. I mean, you know, yeah. yeah, that's right where we started out. You know, you were saying that, and I, I feel this, I do feel this way too, that any of these struggles, especially my God, I was like, my story, I didn't even realize how there's a lot of similarities, a lot yeah. like, you know, Weight Watchers, like super early, got them to give me like lifetime membership when like they should never have. I was like 14. I had to get like a doctor's note to go. Did you have to get, I was so young that my doctor had to write a letter. You know, there was a, well, you know, my mom took me at 10 to the physician that told me to starve myself. And then I went to like the leading, one of the leading actually specialists, you probably know Dr. Dietz, Bill Dietz. I went to see him at Tufts and he was like, you're just fine. Mm -hmm. You're fine. You're going to be just fine. I remember thinking, I don't really feel fine right now, but All right. You you're like 18 people just told me I'm not okay. Unless yeah. I'm sin, but so you really have a lot to work against, but yeah. can you imagine if he was the first? Oh my God. It's so funny. The amount of, you know, I, I have this kind of side hustle where parents come to talk to me about their kids and mm-hmm. I am like, like my spirit animals, a lion. If you don't even need to see me to know that, by the way, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, Oh yeah. You're like, mm-hmm, that's true. And like, so I'll, A, I'll never see the kid. Like, I'm like, they're like, well, let me bring the kid. I was like, nope, no, thank you. And like, here, my first two questions are like, what does the pediatrician say? Yeah. Three questions. What does the pediatrician say? What does your kid say? And what's yeah. your relationship like with food? Right. And if I can ever not get a kid into an office before they have car keys, I'll do whatever I can mm. in my life. Cause I, it, it was so harmful to me, albeit why I'm here, blah, blah, blah. But right. I don't know that we need to have like a lot of wounded healers in this world. Like, yeah, we, we good. Yeah, we are good. Yeah. Let's, let's take that out. If right. you get the message, <laughs> before cut the, the legacy mess. right here. Yeah. 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 That whole mess in the message. I'm like, let's cut out the mess. Just get the message early. Like I, yeah. I'll just bury the time. It is. I mean, I had a mom this morning was like, but don't you, she's 12. Like, don't you think she should be aware of her weight? I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, not at all. Yeah. I think you're scared of gaining weight, which we're dealing with in therapy. And we don't need to put that on her. Yep. P.S. Yeah. P.S. What a different world we live in. I was like on Cape Cod this last summer. Every, I mean, I was like, get it people. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were like t-shirts and this and height. I mean, everybody was just rocking it and flaunting it. And I was yeah. like, do you here yeah. for this? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of bad things in this world, but like this body positivity movement, parts of it are so wonderful. It like opens my heart. I feel the same way. I took my daughter into Target, which is just, I still have fun in there and she loves, you know, what's the best place on earth. It's just a lot of fun. I don't know why. I mean, there's other places I love. I take my dog there. It's just, yeah, you take your dog. I love it. And I, I was noticing though, and I'm like, you know, something for the first time, there is a mannequin that I swear has my hips. Like I looked and I'm like, hallelujah. You know, Yeah. I mean, I when curves. I was a morbidly obese person, I could shop one place and it was Lane Bryant, or I could shop like men's one at, you know, one X, two X yeah. sweatpants. And I, I mean, I, I really love Lane Bryant for what they did for me. And I like, I mean, I had to order my prom dress from a catalog, you know, cause mm. it was like a three X. It was like, it was real. I'm, I'm so excited about so much of this. Mm. Mm-mm. What, you know, I want to talk about it for a minute. You, you mentioned, which I definitely relate to this being not just a physical issue and no. problem. It's spiritual, it's emotional. And there might be some that are like, huh, how is right. that? Or maybe to just <laughs> unpack it because, um, yeah. I remember when I started getting into rooms of recovery, I was like, all right, I'm so sorry. That's nice about the spiritual and the emotional. How the heck do I lose this weight? I love you. Yeah. I was there like, they're like, your body's none of your business. I was like, hard stop there. My body's my business. It's like, your weight's none of your business. I was like, um, zero. Yes. My weight and my body, you know, and I had to like, exactly. I'd be like, I need to lose weight. Like shut up Yeah. (laughs) with all your like, love yourself more. So yes, I hear you. Yeah. How do you, how do we, well, I think the, the first thing we would say is if the way you're doing it is working, this ain't the podcast for you, you know? Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Go or like <laughs> parts of this aren't right. So right. I think there, there's an interesting, they, they always say like, you know, we row and the universe steers. And if we try to steer the, the boat just remains. And so there is this piece of getting well in any, in any realm 
in your relationship with food and your relationship with others and your relationship with yourself and your relationship with the world, whatever, that there has to be a shift in what you choose to believe. So that to me, my working definition of spirituality, and let me tell you something, like I'm like a weird shaman with a drum, you know, and a side hustle. I got these like Tibetan bowls everywhere. But if you really want to just get down to the brass tacks of all of it, addiction is about control and recovery is about trust. And that requires a shift in what you choose to believe. It's Mm. pretty straight, right? So it doesn't have to do with crystals and bowls. It actually has to do with opening your heart and opening your mind to a new way of believing, right? And for those of you who like, you know, like, because the truth is, is that, and I say this to people all of the time, like we're always praying to something and we're usually when it comes to food and weight disorders, praying to diet culture, which is a, is an abuser to the nth degree. Cause I actually think it's not fair to call it an abuser. Cause usually an abuser is like one person mm. who, who comes and beats the shit out of you. Not to say that there's anything okay with that, but it is not funded by billions and billions of dollars and focus groups and, and lives to keep you in the system. So it's actually much bigger than an abusive relationship. I mean, a six-year-old starts to yeah. check body check a six-year-old. Yeah. Um, I'm trained in breath work. And they say at the age of five, a girl stops or a female identified stops breathing correctly mm-hmm. because she starts to brace her belly. Yep. We're up against so much more. So of course mm-hmm. it has to be this very conscious shift in what you choose to believe. Yeah. And if we're believing, so are we praying to the power of a, of like a juice fast? That's a kind of terrible God. Yeah. Right. Or are we praying to the idea of like, oh, maybe this doesn't work in my nervous system and my endocrine system so well. And maybe I need to learn how to surrender and learn how to tolerate distress and learn how to use coping skills in a new way that don't involve me getting sicker. Yeah. But that's the big thing too, that a big thing I teach is about, you know, gosh, once you stop eating sugar, that's just the beginning of the game, right? Cause you gotta learn how to relive your life. Cause so much of it has been organized around when I'm sad, I binge when I'm happy, I eat cake. It's like a whole new way to live. Yeah. So that's what I mean by that. And I think it's deeply emotional because yeah, my first memories are of food. Michael Moss talks a lot about that in his book, Hooked. Mm, mm Mm-hmm, right. Like, ready? Dunkaroos. Oh, yeah. We weren't allowed those, but I know exactly. But, like, don't they sort of make you, like, you want to go get them right now? Yeah, I mean, when you said snack walls, I was like, oh, God. You're like, yes, please. Yeah, (laughs) Big Newtons, even. That was my house. Oh, Big Newtons. (laughs) And I lived in Newton. I actually interviewed the, like, Big Newton dude. (laughs) Yeah, you're like, snack walls, are we doing... The sandwiches are we doing the devil's food like where we right. but you see what i'm saying oh yeah i mean these mem- these are and and like by the way if i said cocaine we might be like yeah when i was like 19 like we're not starting so early right so i just think it's we're up against a lot which i i say in a very validating way to anybody listening which is just to say this food yeah. thing's real which is yeah that's why i talk about it like a relationship well because it is because you only have to have two relationships in life with food and with yourself but also yeah because i think to look at it any other way doesn't give you a comprehensive solution and i'm all about like getting into relationship and solving this thing and just like yeah maintenance. Yeah. I, I, I am so, I'm so tracking with you, Molly. I'm so with you. I'm so with you on this. Well, and I think, and, and curious what you feel about this. I saw the, it's like the level of finally, you know, we say self-love a lot, loving myself, but also really it's like, rather than looking at my body as it had to be this way and that way. And it started to shift with, as I looked at food as, nourishment and a gift and yeah. like truly feeding this temple. Like I changed the, it's just but amazing. That took a really long time for me. You, yeah. It took, yeah. It took I was like you, like, I was like, I mean, me, I was like, I'm a really like well-known eating disorders, therapist, gaining weight, hand over fist. It's bad. Look, I'm about to lose my job. Tell me right now. And then maybe I'm a very slow learner. It's part of my charm. Like maybe that fifth year. I was off sugar and flour. I was like, oh, that's really health. Oh, by oh, microbiome. Like I didn't give two shifts about yeah, your my health. I gave I I was so entrenched in diet culture. Yeah. 
and eventually like now, I mean, I'm 13 years in your, it's like, now I'm like, I need to have a salad. I can't believe I say this. It makes me want to punch myself, but I'm like, I need to have, a, I need some greens in me. Cause like my body, like I can feel my microbiome, but that is yep. advanced practice. I, I did yep. not, I did not get those results for very, 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 very long. And, and you want to know something? I didn't get them until I gave up artificial sweetener. Cause that was like, mm -hmm. that was keeping me down for a really long time. And I was real delusional about it. It was the last thing I gave up. Yeah. I, I hear you girl on that one. I'll tell you the one that I have, I, maybe you should write a book called breaking up with stevia. I mean, I should write a book called breaking up with monk fruit too. I think it's like the devil's greatest coup. I think yeah. because also if you're like our age, like, and we were like, I mean, we were raised in the world of like, it's Equal. good for you. Like yeah. They like have us believing that like art of like artificially made even like, but even like stevia is like 500 times the potency of sugar. So it just yeah. messes with every system. I remember yeah. being in Hawaii when I was getting trained to be a shaman and I ate a banana there and I was like, wait, is this what a banana is supposed to taste like? Like, this right. is incredible. Like <laughs> it's ridiculously it's sweet. I, right. Yeah. 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 But it's only because I was like off sweetener for a while and I was like, Oh yeah. This is why. And I hated myself. Cause like, I'm such like a morbidly obese, angry person in my soul. You know, I'm like, there's like always this part of me when I'm like this kind of like healthy, like taking my vitamins. I'm like, what happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Who like <laughs> are you get the omega three fatty acid out of your pillbox, Molly? What's happened here? Where are the bags of like colorful things. Like I don't I understand. Yeah. So I have to say I'm a sucker for a Ruffles potato chip to this day. It's yeah. just my drug of choice, you know? Oh girl, we are. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah. I was just, I'd have to say if we both weren't in recovery from our eating disorder, I think we'd have a heck of a time going through a food court. Yeah. I was like, who would <laughs> outdo who? That would I'll be a show. Right. You go left. Yeah. We'll text. We'll meet each other halfway. We'll oh. share. We'll get more. My gosh, this is the only, this is the place where I find myself getting competitive. I'm like, oh, I would out eat you. There is no way. Although, I, know, I mean, I would like throw up anymore. So, but yeah, I mean, probably. <laughs> Who knows? You, yeah, maybe. We don't know. We don't want to try it. No Instead, need. Instead, we'll just, we'll just do the chatting. We'll start. Right. About it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I think that's the piece of the emotional, which is like, yeah, got to learn how to soothe differently. And then I think, honestly, the biggest piece of all of it, which is the most spiritual of concepts is that of self-forgiveness and self-acceptance, which is doing it imperfectly yeah. is actually the greatest act of self-love because we get caught in the cycle where we make a mistake and then we hurt ourselves when we make a mistake. Yeah. I, I want to go, I want to rerun for a sec what you said, soothing. This is an important one. Cause I know I just heard this little, I get this little beep. Like there are others that are like, how do you, how do I soothe myself? And I'll tell you, there's still times, I know I'm curious if you get this, where it just seems like it would be a really good idea to get a big thing of ice cream. It just seems yeah. like that would be soothing. I know, I mean, it doesn't, that doesn't work. Well, but and Jill, I actually think there's times where I'm like, yeah. it's a really good idea to get a big bag of ruffles and it's not so bad and there's no sugar, no flour. But yeah, when we're using food to solve our problems, yeah, it's still like sort of in this, it's still not freedom, right? Yeah, that's right. And sometimes it happens. Right, that's right. But what do we do? Is that the question? Yeah. How do you, you know, you and like what you've seen worked, how do you, those moments that you have emotions you don't want to have, like, yeah. let's be honest. It's the, the ones that shame. Yeah. Sadness, fear. Sadness. Yeah. So first of all, everything I'm about to tell you is data driven, but I just got a puppy and it's so amazing because it's true to say that the principles of behaviorism run across all species. So I was like a dog training because I'm like insane about getting my dog trained because I'm a behaviorist. And I was like, <laughs> you know, well, he starts barking in his crate when I bring someone in and I don't know what to do about it. And she's like, well, you know, you got to train him to be calm in his trait crate when nobody's there. I'm like, oh, I'm like, Brittany, <laughs> you're basically me. So the first thing I want to say to everybody is this thing like coping skills, like all it does is bring back Weight Watchers to you, right? Like, don't you tell me to like take a bubble bath, like instead of eating, except for like, that's what the research says, but nobody talks about like all of these little, uh, these little pieces that are so important. Okay. So the first thing I want to say is like, you know, nothing is, I had this guy, he would be like, Molly, nothing's ever going to taste as good as the food. Molly, nothing's ever going to work as well as the food. And I'm like, yes. And also nothing is ever going to feel as shameful as the food, right? So 
in addiction or in disorder or an unhealthy relationship, we really rely on one, two, three, the dark bottom and eight, nine, 10, the high, high, right? And the way that we actually live like a peaceful, content life is learning how to live like four, five, six, seven. And part of that is giving up the thing that makes you feel amazing and then drops you down and then keeps you in that cycle. But like my dog in his crate, you have to learn how to like these things when you're not craving food, which by the way, is a one plus one is five. Cause I actually learned so much about myself through this process. Let me tell you friends, the person who was most opposed to this concept was Mua, but Marsha Linehan, who created dialectical behavioral therapy puts out such an argument for this that I was like, I remember as many, it was an ER was still on. I love that show. And I wanted to binge my brains out. And I said, well, I'm going to try it. I'm going to sit and watch this episode of ER. And if I still want to binge at the end of it, then I'm going to do it. And I, and I was in those days, really desperate days. So I would have put like, you know, oven gloves on and duct tape on my mouth if I had to. And like, it worked, it didn't. Yeah. I didn't feel better, but I didn't binge. That's the other thing, right? We have such like expectations because we're so used to getting like high and dropping that it's like, yeah, I'm going to go make malas. It's going to pass the time because cravings only last a certain amount of time. I'm not going to, I'm not going to feel better and I'm not going to feel worse. And that's like, you know, but the other thing it actually does, at least for me and lots of people, it's like, I, I don't know. I like so many things. Who knew? I love making Spotify mixes. I love malas. I like putting ice on the back of my neck. I love talking to people on the phone. I love me some video game. I love me some gin rummy on my computer, you know? And so you learn to sort of expand things. And I think the thing I can't say enough though is expectations are great killers. And I'm, I'm sorry to say that it is true that if you're feeling really sad and you go and read a book or you go listen to a podcast, or even if you do like a song or whatever, it's pro- it's not going to be the same effect yeah. as eating cookies. And the thing about learning how to tolerate distress is the only job of tolerating distress ready for this one is to not make things worse. Mm. But we're like American. We're like, if I don't feel good and amazing by the end of this song, I'm binging again. It's like, okay, but no data supports that. <laughs> right. Oh, that's powerful. Well, yeah. Thank you, Julie. Yeah. I'm like, damn, that's a, that's a nugget. But it's really true. It's honestly, not yeah. to like sell it, but like, I have yeah. to say some of the finest writing I've ever done in the history of my life. Like I'm very clear on chapter six and seven and breaking up with sugar about this. I actually, mm. people who I train in DBT, I'm like, just go read those. Tra- Cause we've been s- like diet culture has sold us such a crap bill of goods about coping skills yeah. that we like. And if you really think about it, friends, like it is a little crazy to say, oh, dance in your living room and it'll feel as good as eating a sleeve of cookies. It's like, then you've never had a sleeve of cookies. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. there's it's, no comparison. Right. But, but like, also that demoralization is, is, you know, is inexplicable yeah. and being stuck in that cycle, you know, like, yeah. yeah. Someone says like, it's so hard, so hard. It's like, it's hard, but it's hard with hope. When you're in the thing, it's just hard Mm. and miserable and there's no light. Right. Choose it, you know? Right. You said something I think is very important. And I, this was, this took me a while and I couldn't even see it. And especially for those that are used to the high, right? So, and, and, and of course this can be food. It could be alcohol. It could be men or women or, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh. It can be your work. I'm working with someone right now who has the greatest work addiction. She's like, I can't stop. I just can't. I hate it so much and I can't stop. I was like, I've heard that before, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 so any of these, anything, anything where you're getting that hit. And I think that living in the middle, that living in the, that, that gray middle area, that's the place you're right. Because we don't see commercials. I'm sorry. I don't see people like, actually, you know, what's funny. I actually, a long time ago, used to do a little acting. I did a commercial that was in the middle. I had bladder control problem in the commercial. And I'm like, who the hell is going to want to watch this and feel like now they want to go, you know, play golf again or whatever it was. I'm like, gosh, darn it. But the point is we're not shown that very much. It's no. drama. And we're not shown the other thing I'm saying, which is, and you have to use these skills when you're not activated. Like, that's the other thing I think is crazy. Like, yeah that we think like, oh, you know what? I'm going to listen to that Spotify song when I want to eat, like no chance. Like I could literally be standing in your kitchen. You'd be like, Molly, move out of the way. I'm getting those cookies. Like right. these are really boring, unsexy concepts, like practice, right. self-awareness, like slowing it down. Like 
like that versus diet culture, which is like 30 pounds, 30 days, like love yourself. Like, I mean, it sounds yeah. so great, but it doesn't work. And we all know that, right? Because some right. time or another, we've been really harmed by that. Absolutely. You mentioned about cra- cravings not lasting long. And I heard a little like, okay, so how long do they last? Can you give us, give us the anatomy of a craving? I can. Um, the thing I want to say is they don't, they don't measure. I hate eating disorder data. I just don't think it's accurate. Yeah. Um, hate it. And so I really rely a lot on substance use data. Yeah. And so the substance use data, but it's different, right? So substance use data says cravings very rarely last longer than 20 minutes. That's a really long time. Yeah. I'm like, that's a long time sometimes. Well, I actually think it might be longer with the food because you're in front of it. Like if I'm sitting, so I want to say to people, like there's some really basic things about cravings, which like, you know, to me, I just always think everything's so complicated, but like a, a real, like winning concept is like, if you're really having a craving and you're like at Christmas dinner, like get out of the room. Like this never occurred to me, Julie. Right. <laughs> like pick like, your butt up. Oh, you want to eat those brownies? Why don't you move away from the brownies? I'm like, this is a concept. Wow. Mind blown. You it, know, it is a little though. Cause I've been, I've been in that space too. And I'm like, there's no way. And you feel magnetized. That's magnetized. That's, that's, that's yeah. yeah. And so it's so funny, right? Like sometimes just leaving the room and splashing some water on your face. Like yeah. again, like it's so simple. Like, and, and in those moments, I think that you can get really locked in to be like, cause that's what, you know, the, the disease, if you're using that languaging wants, wants you to do the brain is like, go get that right now. That's what makes me feel good now. Right. Right. Um, right. which is no harm. I mean, that's actually, it's very anthropological and deep and safe. It's what we've known. Um, yeah. so changing that's really hard. So yeah. the data on substance use says that, it, that they last about 20 minutes. And what's really interesting about cravings, you're really bringing me back to my like science days is that you can't always like know why a craving's coming. And I'm like a shrink, you know, like I always want to know why, but like, sometimes right. they just come up from no good reason. Right. 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 Do we take them so personally? Like what happened? Like when I was fighting with my partner, it's like, I don't know. Sometimes I'm just like reading a book on my couch and I'm like, Tate's cookies. Yes. You know, like, Oh God, Tate's cookies. <laughs> but the problem is, is that we become so reactive to them that it's almost like, you know, your kid falls on the playground. And you're like, Oh my God, are you okay? Your kid's like, no. <laughs> right. But if we're like the craving comes up and you're like, Oh, Hey, it's called, you know, it's called, um, surfing. It's called surfing the craving. You know, you're yeah. more just like running with it on the ocean. Not so reactive. Oh, here it is. <clears throat> you know, don't take it so personally. Yes. The way you don't take it so personally by the by is to not be so reactive about it. When you, you know, when you give into a craving, it's like putting gasoline on a flame. Right. Oh, yeah. And it's really proving the point to your cravings like a petulant child. Yeah. You, know, you have a kid that screams for a cupcake. You give that kid a cupcake. You have sent a message. Yeah. You have an inner child who's screaming for a cupcake and you give it a cupcake. You have sent, which also means that if you're going to reparent yourself, there's going to be some screaming. Boy, was mm. there screaming. I mean, I cried when Amy Winehouse said, I cried for you on the kitchen floor. I was like, believe it, friend. I cried for you. I cried and screamed on the kitchen floor for a long time. I really did. It took a while for me to get through this thing. Uh, I love your honesty and just, and I get it. I, I, and I know others listening. I mean, it's just, it, it, I'm even thinking back, you know, I have this memory. It's so funny. I was four years old going to nursery school. I literally, it's like, you know, something that's etched in my brain. And my dad took us to Dunkin' Donuts in Boston. Mm-hmm. It started there. It was a big thing. I think it was a big thing yeah, everywhere. It's still a big thing in Boston. It's, still, it's, <laughs> it's like, big thing. it's like one of Boston's big things. Yeah. It's, it's a big yeah. thing. We yeah. went and like, what did I get? I mean, I remember this. I think he got me at least two, if not three. And I like the chocolate cover, chocolate cover, chocolate with the sprinkles and the jimmies and the whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I ate like the whole, th- I ate all of them. And mm-hmm. I was holding my dad's hand and my favorite elephant stuffed animal. And it's like, one of my best memories is like, going to nursery school with my elephant and my dad and my donuts. And that's why that's hardwired. It took me, I mean, it it did feel like losing a friend, a really special friend. Me too. I mean, and I, I don't know, like I I say this to everyone because like both Julie and I are on the other side, but like, I never thought I could break up a sugar. No. I mean, I was protecting it with my life. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not far-fetched that someone as trained in eating disorders and weight would know that sugar is the problem, but just, you know, an addict protects their substance. And I was protecting that thing with my life. It was the solution. It wasn't my problem. And so 
I can't believe it. And I have to say across the bar, I think you relate to this too, but anytime I have taken that brave step to give up something I know doesn't work for me, that spiritual vacuum, you know, something that's harming me leave something totally new yeah. and better and softer and like, oh, just comes in. Yeah. And believe you me, ain't no perfect life over here, but yes. boy, is it better. <laughs> Way better than like yeah. being face planted in a cake. I think about it all the time. I really do. I really think I go through days where I have really beautiful days where I'm present. And I think I can't, I'm, I'm so grateful that I'm not controlled by food today. Mm. Just not. And I, and I love food. I mean, let me go back to the beginning, you know, go to Bali for a month. I'm up here. I don't ever really, I just don't, I just don't think too much about it. It's very hardwired now Mm. as I'm sure it is for you. Yeah. I, um, it's so interesting when you go back to like, you started to realize, oh, the microbiome and the, I've done a lot of gut work. Um, heal to be honest, I think, you know, you put sugar, let's be honest, birth control and antibiotics for Mm -hmm. years and years. And I, I worked with somebody, what was great is she doesn't do diets. None of that. We did like scientific data. What the heck's going on in my gut and my biome. And it was so fantastic because when we looked at what my body, I had already said, I can tell she doesn't like this. She doesn't like this. She doesn't, I talk about myself third person and you could see in the data, it was like, you know, it's weird. Spinach has like aquaphor something it like, and I knew that. And so mm. I can't, whatever, but it, no, but it isn't it, this is like the dream, but you have yeah. to like, but sometimes you have to take these like kindergarten steps. I just always think when people like yeah. with long, because one of my therapists once said it to me, she's like, you make this seem too easy to people. She was like real, like it was a really profound moment for me. Like, yeah. You're in, that's like in 20 years yes. in the beginning. It's like, Oh yeah. I don't think I can go past the Dunkin' Donuts without going in. Oh, Oh, a hundred. And I, I, you know, worked for Panera for 11 years. I love that story. It was out of control. Crazy. I had free access to I everything. I would love to have watched that reality show. Julie, it was... Julie's in her addiction at Panera. Girl, I got this download to work there and I'm like, God, what the heck are you effing thinking? You've got to be nuts. And you know, what's funny about that. It ended up being, I was in the store as a manager for six months before they put me in HR. I was making cookies, making big, it was selling. Mm. And I'm like, I would call my, you know, person helping me out. I'd be sponsored. I'd be like, Hey, um, I just, just like, I'm literally around 500 cookies right now. I just need to say something. I don't even know how you did that. It was insanity. And then, you know, it's funny because it ended up being, it was a really great place for me to kind of land for a while. And I ironically met my, my, um, other half now from there who now brings us salads home. <laughs> he does not bring cookies, but I was like, you gotta be kidding me. And my first job was at the famous ice cream store at Boston college. Oh mix yeah. Yum. Thousands of peanut butter cups. The guy was like, take as much as you want. And I'm like, I'm screwed. <laughs> Panera also has only one other place. Starbucks has this yeah. like, uh, herbal iced tea. And it's yeah. so good. Without Very sugar. few places have that. Yes. 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 They have, they do. They have some good, they have some good, their, their almond milk is unsweetened. Oh, I that's know. so good to know. Just so you know. <laughs> I'm all over it. This could be a side, yeah. like we could just be like, this is sponsored by Panera today. Yeah. Or anywhere. But I think that's so important again, again, like in the size, like, I just think you need to be able to eat under all circumstances and me be able to flex. Gosh, this woman's podcast was amazing. Like yeah. she just had these bright lines and then she was real flexible about everything else. And she just yeah. had such a beautiful time. I mean, it's so mm. amazing. And that's what yeah. life is about. Yeah. We do these things to live a better life, not to be entrenched by another obsession and addiction. And I think diet culture is not a fan of me saying that. Yeah. Hey, but you got to hey, always be careful if you're making this big change in your life that you're not just yeah. trading obsession because it's a thief and it's not what our purpose in life is. That's spiritual, right? Our purpose in life is to be free and then help free others and to love so we can love others. Mm. But that's the thing about it, right? The biggest spiritual concept in all of it is that idea of self-forgiveness. And I know you relate to that too, because you and I both have done this imperfectly for lots of years, but anytime I've done it imperfectly, it hasn't been no big deal. I don't know about you. I've been like, oops, I ate that (laughs) sugar-free, but low sugar granola, like, okay. I'm like, Siren, you ate that low sugar granola. What is happening for you? What is he up to learn? What can you do to heal this? Let's get this party started, friend. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's a it's a whole new way of dialoguing and as you said relationship with yourself and all that matters 100 percent. no i'm so and and i think what you said is important this is you know everyone listening, Molly has had a long, a long time of recovery in this space. Uh, mine has been imperfect and a long time as well. And it's, you know, for me actually now the gift is when there's been moments I'm like, that was definitely, I was eating over emotions. It's just like hand of my heart. Ugh. All right. What's up? How do I love you? But I think that's the point that like there, yeah. we, we, are so pejorative and judgmental and we become bad people that we lose the thread, which is, yeah. you know, lapses are sirens, cravings are, si- most cravings are sirens. It's yeah. like to say, you know, Hey, get introspective. What's happening. What do you really need right now? And if we're going into that morality place, which diet culture loves, cause it keeps us in the cycle, you know, mm-hmm. then we'll find another coach who just has the same experience as us. And is just going to you know, victim shame us into buying their $10,000 program and telling us that we're the problem. We lose the whole point and the whole thread. That's right. And that's the spiritual piece that I personally think that's what makes the difference that goes from, this is a physical bodily, you know, um, you're the problem situation to let's remember that we're all connected to something greater. Yeah. And, and it moves it, it moves it from diet to relationship, right? Yeah. Relationship with self relationship with something like yeah. the difference between a diet and a relationship is a, is yeah. what you choose to believe and, and up leveling yeah. sure. What's so much of what you do in your work, like up leveling your belief system, up leveling yourself, up leveling your bravery yeah. to say, yeah, I'm going to drive past the Dunkin' Donuts today. Let me see what happens. Yeah. If I completely collapse, I'll go tomorrow. I remember that so well. Don't you like, I remember the first time I was like walking down third Avenue and I was going to binge at the bodega and I was, and I just had this, like, again, this downloads, like call Elizabeth, mm. just call Elizabeth. She was a therapist friend of mine. She was in recovery. I called her on the phone and I said, I'm trying to do that thing where I call someone instead of eat. I don't, I've never done this before. Cause I always thought I was better than it, you know, and it worked <laughs> Yeah, and I walked past the bodega and it's worked multiple times. And that's it. But just, just to model, like, yeah. I remember when I finished my book, I mean, I've never had a binge large desire to binge larger than that ever in the history of my life. And I called my friend, Aaron, who's in my power circle. And I said, I just, I'm off tomorrow. I want to go buy two things of kind chocolate granola. And that's what I want to do. And she said, can you, can you, you have dinner plans. Can you just go to dinner and then call me after I said, I can, mm. that's willingness. That's spirituality. Yeah. And then I did a call director and she said, how are you feeling? And I said, I think I can go until tomorrow morning. And she said, great, call me tomorrow morning. And this is why mm. connection is the opposite of addiction, by the way. Right. Mm. And then I just got through it. Like, yeah. but it is really, uh, it is really about being willing to believe another story. Cause I've had people be like, Oh, Molly, you say just not tonight, but I know the rest of my life. I'm like, you got to play the game. Like you got to play the right now game. Like you got to be in on it a hundred percent. You know what though, which just hit me. Sorry. I had this like, boom. Or don't apologize. We're in the middle right. of lunch, you know? Yeah. We're in the middle. <laughs> that's the whole freaking. but that's it for life. It's the for moment life. right now. So mm-hmm. you got to play the game of like, we don't know the future really. It's really true. And I've said that like, you don't actually, I don't positively know I'm never picking up a drink again. I don't positively know right. that I'm never picking up sugar again. I know right now in this moment. And if I'm not right now in this moment, I know I need to get some kind of support, a shift in my belief system yeah. to just get me through the next moment. And that's yeah. all it is. Yeah. So boring. It, it, I, it, no, I a know. cleanse is so much sexier. Like, but Molly, like, isn't there a pill? Right. We're, we're sorry. There is not that I know. This of. is it. This yeah, is, this but it's beautiful. And I love it. And I love when people call me about it. You and I have even done it in our, in our fast loving friendship. It's like, yeah, yeah. It was a really hard day with the food and just talked it through. Like, yeah, I love that, like, but that's what it's about. It's really about, that's what they say, right? Micah Schultz therapist, you say like, just about loving and being loved. Cause that's really all we want. And by the way, the psychodynamic piece of food, of course, is that right. It's eating that love, especially sugar, especially sugar. It is love. It is safety. It is love. And it's like, can we find that in a different way? That's right. That's right. Oh my gosh. Good stuff here. My friend. I, all right. Before we wrap, I always, I have, (sighs) we have so much more to talk about. I know. I'm like, we need run. This is what it's like every time I talk to Julie. It's just, (laughs) I want to share our friendship with you. 
<laughs> well, like I'm such an addict to it. I'm like, well, we just oh, you're so- <laughs> but we just said connection is the opposite of addiction. So actually you're in anti-addiction when I am an anti-addiction <laughs> here, but I want more. <laughs> I know I'm like that. It's true. Like, I'm like, it's okay with you. And with fr- like, it's okay to want more of that. That's all right. It's beautiful. That's- yes. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> yes. I just, my last question for now would be what is really moving you? What's on your heart now? Like, what do you feel Mm -hmm. really, um, is, is important for you to do next that you, you feel like is, is yours to do. And that could be book class course. Like what, what are you seeing out there that you feel like, all right, this is where I need to step in. Like you wrote the book. Wait, like, do you know the answer? Are you asking this? Cause do you know the answer? I am actually not positive, but I want to say one thing, which is keep it open ended. Well, one of my friends, this is like a really gnarly story, but she was like, didn't know she should get married to this guy. And she was bulimic. And I was like, well, you're bulimia. I'll let you know, you know, like you're not supposed to get married to him. Like you're eating this or I'll let you know quick. And by the way, it was a bad choice on her part. But I've really found myself like, doing a lot of things for other people, having people who work for me really want to do this thing and then being, and then finding myself not in alignment with myself. And so I've actually, uh, I've done a lot of slowing down and I've actually done a lot of shedding and it's been scarier than anything I've ever done, but also really freeing in its own way. So anyway, um, I've seen so many people like damaged by coaching, by health coaching. I mean, Mm. more than I could ever share in my entire life. And so actually feeling super called to help. I mean, a, like the price point of therapy and specialized therapy is so high and not everybody needs it, but it's sometimes the only thing that's available. And so I'm just feeling really called to get into the coaching world, which oddly (laughs) or godly, I am in some kind of collaboration with you about, which is its own sort of divine story. So that's, and I'm really into teaching right now. Like I'm really into teaching people what I know, um, and less about, I was starting to write my second book and I just like sort of backed off of it for a minute. Cause I don't feel mm. that called to do it. And, um, I have an idea that I need to be speaking more and writing less. Um, and you know, the beauty of life, at least for me, it's like evolve or die. Like that doesn't work. I can always, I mean, I can always go back to all of it, but I'm really like, I'm really trying to listen to what I'm being called to do. And I'm really doing that through like a very serious, like journaling meditation prayer practice because none of the ideas that I get are mine. Did I answer the question? Yeah, that's beautiful. And I actually didn't, I wasn't sure. So, and I, I, yes, beautiful. And I, I think just the, what you're really saying and I, gosh, my heart's like, yep, is putting yourself in that place of quiet and listening so that you can really hear what is the good order. And I just like love communing with people. So I do these like group coachings, like not the thing I'm making, but I do these like meetings with me once a month. And it's like, I could be like, I could have like hardcore COVID and my soul is so awake while I'm with, while I'm communing with these 40 people. Right. And when I'm doing the, like, I'm just trying to do things that make like my heart sing as like cheesy as that might sound. Cause I, my heart sings loud and then it's so helpful to others. So that's mm. where I am with all of it. That's awesome. Molly. I love that. It comes back to the whole, you know, your struggle. You probably, I'm sure you've heard the whole, you know, your, your mess is your message, what you struggled Word. with. And you know, this is, this is how we turn back around and extend our hand to others that are, that are not in the same space yet and to share. And I just think it's awesome what you're doing. Thank you. I love it. Love and love you. you. <laughs> All right. Any last heart flare? That's like now we're now see, this is the addict. I'm like, so I said, I said, we're done. And now I'm no, like, we're never saying goodbye. I mean, one more <laughs> this every time. Can I also just say, I'm so obsessed with intensity. Oh, we love it. It's that spiritual fitness class. And I like do it in such like, I do it for like, not for larger bodies per se, but for bodies that have been through body trauma, Mm. you know, and we're just loving it. And I do it for, you know, I do it, pay what you can. Like we do it on Tuesday mornings at 8am. And I just want to invite anybody listening. Like it's this, again, it's like, I, I roll at it and I'm an instructor. It's like, it's like a spiritual fitness class where you pair mantras with movement. And I am really about the mantras and less about the movement. I have people in wheelchairs doing it. It's like, a, it's like this really powerful practice. Amazing. I'm just really about like getting in touch with ourselves. Yeah. 
I love it. Okay. That's that. I mean, that I think is also my truth. Mm. Drop the mic right there, girl. There you go. That's it. Wow. Love you, friend. Love you. Thank you for you, your heart flare, your whole story, your badassery. My you is me. Your you is me. And I chose the wrong pronouns to be working with. <laughs> my you is me. My me is me. My I think to start you. say, this is my, I was my you is me on the show. This is really who I am, in case you're wondering. Yeah. Yeah, everyone, we're we're still rolling. So yeah, you're gonna hear. But I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful to have a friend like you, and Uh, you know, here we are. Love you. Love you, Molly. Thank you. This was such a gift. And your gift. My my cat is right under here watching. She's looking at both of us like like what? Love you both. What's going on? All right, we're gonna actually say goodbye, and uh, I'm so grateful that the divine brought you in and I get to share you today. And I know everyone's going to be very, very touched from this conversation. Well, great. Come see me then. Love you.